<laughs> I don't actually know any German except for the word Gemüse, which means vegetable, I think. Um, so I don't, I'm not going to be saying welcome in German. <laughs> uh, I'm John Alban Wilkins. Uh, I'm the Drupal 8 mobile initiative lead, um, which uh, <coughs> means that I do a lot less coding than I did during the Drupal 7 development cycle. Um, I sort of look at the big picture, try to come up with plans with the community, and you know, get those vetted, trying to get all that stuff uh, sort of planned out and sort of push and motivated people. That's my primary job. I'm not the guy who implements mobile stuff in Drupal 8. So I wanted to step back just from the, uh, the actual sort of goals, listed goals of the mobile initiative and the work that we have to do still and talk about the big picture. Because I really feel like mobile is a, it's a really, really sensitive subject when it comes to Drupal. And the reason, of course, for this is, is disruptive technologies. There have been many disruptive technologies in our history. Uh, printing press was a disruptive technology. The web, of course, was disruptive. It caused a lot of, uh, you know, the newspaper industry is completely foundering because it's not able to adapt to the web. Mobile is sort of the new disruptive technology. And it is already killing markets. There are a lot of uh, phone manufacturers who are like, yeah, we're top of the world. And they didn't see this sort of smartphone emergence of having sort of basically mobile computers in your pocket instead of mobile phones. And uh, be, it, it's causing all sorts of disruptions. Um, and it's actually more of a sort of a mass extinction. Um, this thing has such potential to change the way that we live our lives that it can easily just squash Drupal like a bug and not even notice it. I mean, there's a real technology that if Drupal doesn't adapt to the ways that people are going to use mobile technologies, that Drupal will just not make sense to use anymore. So that's why I think it's really, really important that we remind ourselves that how important this is and to actually start working and make sure that this work actually happens because it really, really matters. Um, I've talked about this a few times before. I'm going to go over this real briefly. There's basically five ways to build a mobile solution that I've been able to figure out. Uh, you can have your sort of native apps, of course which is you know, code compiled to run natively on iPhones and Androids. Um, there are web applications, which are basically it's a website, and then just sort of you're browsing that, that website application you know, in your mobile browser. Uh, then there's this mobile desktop domain switching, uh, where you, when you're on a desktop browser, you see the desktop site, and when you're on a mobile browser, it sort of redirects you automatically to a separate domain name that has uh, the mobile site. Uh, and then, of course, there's this new responsive design, which has a single s HTML source and then just sort of adapts based using media queries to the different size viewports, different size screens. Uh, and then finally, there's uh, REFs. This is a term that uh, Luke Rubluski, who is one of the keynote speakers at DrupalCon Denver, and by the way, his video is awesome from that, that keynote. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Um, he uh, talks about responsive design plus server side components. And this is sort of basically sort of light. Uh, clients, or sorry, uh, light device detection in order to tweak the markup before it gets sent to uh, the, the end browser, right? And we don't have to have the ability to do all five of these things in Drupal core. That doesn't make sense. But we need to make sure that Drupal core allows us to do any of these five ways of, of creating a mobile solution. Because there's no one right way for any particular use case, right? It's going to be one of these, but we can't say that responsive design is the solution you should always use. It's just not that way. So given that these are the things that we need to support in Drupal core, um, what's actually going to make Drupal awesome for mobile? Drupal 8, of course, the feature freeze is in December. Um, the actual release tentatively is next August. Um, that's actually quite a ways away because it, after August, there's this whole like 
year of people sort of building up contrib and knowledge base and figuring out how to use Drupal 8. So it's going to be almost two years from now before we're using Drupal 8 all the time for building sites. That's a long ways off when you're talking about mobile solutions, right? Because people need them right now. So even before Drupal 8 is released, how can we make Drupal awesome? <laughs> and one of the goals that I set out right at the beginning of the initiative was that we should have basically a Drupal 7 mobile guide, a documentation that exists on Drupal.org that talks about all of the different Drupal 7 contrib things that make mobile solutions possible. And this, of course, gives us a sort of better time to market, if you will. Like, we can start showing people how awesome Drupal is right now. Um, and it also helps us figure out how are people using Drupal right now and how can we leverage that to make what goes into Drupal 8, right? Uh, and I'm, I'm happy with, the, like, a whole bunch of help because all I did was, like, an outline and everybody filled it in. It's 100% done. It's on drupal.org slash documentation dash mobile. This is a resource that's available today. Uh, of course, all the documentation on drupal.org is, you know, organic. Um, there's certainly lots of things that we haven't got because we're, I'm trying to promote this so that more people can add their stuff, their solutions to this guide. So I encourage you to go look there, find out new things, and if you know some stuff, go and put it in there. This would be great. This would be a great resource for us. Uh, so that's one of the goals of the Drupal 8 Mobile Initiative. And I want to look at uh, <coughs> the rest of them. Excuse me. Too much yelling like Morton last night. <coughs> um, so these are basically the five points uh, that I think are important to be uh, in Drupal 8 core um, in order for us to have like sort of a, a moniker of like Drupal being really awesome for, for mobile, right? Web services. Of course, web services is part of the Whiskey Initiative. Um, how many people went to uh, Larry's session this morning talking about it? Okay. So I was trying to do some slides, so I didn't actually go to see it. So you probably know more about that than I do. Um, from what I understand, though, is basically it's zero percent. They haven't got to it. They've done a lot of the plumbing uh, for basically all the necessary components are there to allow a contrib module to be really great for web services, but he doesn't have the resources. He doesn't have the people to actually go and do the work to actually get this to be 100% in core, which would be quite nice. So if that's something that you think is really important, I really encourage you to go talk to Larry because he really ne he needs bodies, he needs people to work on stuff. The, the, the sort of the under, a lot of the underlying plumbing is done. They just need to actually just go and implement it. Okay. Uh, responsive design. Uh, this is basically like 95% done right now. Uh, Stark has been converted. Uh, Bartik has been converted. There are a, uh, a couple of fixed width rules in uh, 7 that uh, I don't even know why they're in there. And I think there's a patch there. And it's just waiting for uh, maybe a reroll or, or a review. Or it's, it's really close to being done. Um, I, I think that if you are really into responsive design, go and check out Bartik. You might see some things that you would, would like to improve. I looked at the Nivel navigation. It's, it, it works. Um, but are there some sort of newer navigation techniques that maybe you want to try out? I'm certainly willing to look at those kind of patches. So if you want to improve that, um, go for it, right? Um, these skills, of course, are, they're, they're kind of all over the map. This is kind of a weird initiative in that it has all these different components that are disparate. They're not really similar to each other. So we end up with a, a big, diverse skill set. Um, so if this is your skill set, you know, there's still some stuff to do in there. Uh, front end performance, I would say this is about 10% done. Um, there's a lot of different parts in this as well. Uh, we have JavaScript. Uh, Nod is, uh, is he in here? Oh, there you are. Uh, he gave a JavaScript talk earlier today. Yes? yesterday, um, where he talked about uh, the goals that uh, we've been discussing um, within the community to try and make JavaScript better uh, experience for all Drupal developers. And of course, this is a, you know, improving how we use JavaScript is going to have a big impact on, you know, mobile experience because uh, JavaScript runs kind of slowly on mobile devices. 
Um, and if we can make that JavaScript a lot leaner, uh, load only when it needs to be loaded, those are the things that we need to have help with and get that kind of stuff implemented. Uh, and uh, then we also have uh, CSS stuff. Uh, there's been a lot of work inside uh, CSS stuff. Morton's done a bunch of stuff as far as cleaning it up, trying to make it more organized. And one of the things that I discovered just in the past two weeks uh, is I started reading about SMACs. Uh, how many people here know about uh, SMACs as scalable and um, modular architecture CSS? Just a couple people. Uh, Snook, uh, Jonathan Snook, or Snooka on like Twitter and wherever, uh, he uh, describes smacks.com. He describes a technique for both sort of organizing and categorizing your style sheets so that it becomes much easier to figure out, okay, I'm adding this rule. How should it be organized with the other style sheets? I really, really like this method. I would like to build sort of consensus to see if this is something we want to use in core. I think it is, but I'm not the community. right? So I want to make sure that everybody is on the same page and then we start doing this because I really feel that it's good. The other half of SMACs is not just the, the organization, but the actual class name, how you name your classes. Um, and you need to write that in a sort of modular way. SMACs.com, if you don't know it, uh, talks about this sort of naming convention for your class names. Those things two together um, make, give, basically give you a set of rules uh, so you can use tools like CSS Lint to look through Drupal Core's style sheets and try to correct them using the SMACs rules. I think it's a really good combo. Um, and I would like to see people start jumping on that. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is uh, make the JavaScript and CSS aggregation uh, pluggable. Um, the, the, the JavaScript people actually understand why this is more important than I do. <laughs> uh, but one of the things we started looking at is, is the aesthetic uh, library. This is a Symfony component. Um, that is something that uh, hmm, I should have stopped. I should be discussing this with everybody rather than just sort of lecturing. Um, let me step back here just for a second. Uh, rather than discussing uh, aesthetic, let's talk about JavaScript. So what kind of things do you guys want to talk about as far as JavaScript? How many people went to, to Nod's session yesterday? Okay, excellent. So do you guys have uh, questions, concerns? What do you want to understand better about JavaScript inside the mobile initiative? Because, sorry? Uh, whether or not we're using jQuery itself. Um, so right now in Drupal 7, it, jQuery loads like basically no matter what, <laughs> um, even if you don't use it, which is kind of crazy. So uh, has that patch been committed that at least removes the, it's almost, Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we are almost have the point where you can, uh, we are switching all of Core's usage of Drupal Add JS to use Drupal Add Library. And that basically allows us to find the dependencies for a JavaScript file. So you say, yes, I need jQuery, or yes, I need Drupal settings, whatever. And, and then those dependencies get loaded depending on, uh, I think we should sort of encourage that pattern in Contrib, but Drupal Add JS will not go away. Uh, if you use Drupal add JS, it will assume jQuery as a dependency. Is that what we? Yeah, that's what we discussed. So. Other questions about JavaScript? <laughs> I tried not. <laughs> uh, it's been really, really hard finding uh, people who are passionate about JavaScript, um, but there's certainly a, a lot of opportunity to really shine in this area. Uh, if you want to uh, show off some JavaScript skills. So the, the question was um, uh, ignoring JavaScript aggregation and and I uh, forget the other one, but yeah. bandwidth. Um, what are the major sort of pain points for uh, JavaScript runtime? Um, I'm not actually sure. Maybe it, just jQuery in general. It's it's a large library for when you want to do like one simple thing. Um, uh, Jake, like 
sometimes jQuery just is is way too much code for the one, one simple thing. So there's some simplification that we can do in in some of our core scripts that uh, contrib can either you know leverage or they can continue using jQuery. Yeah. Um, the the sort of the I mean and this is true of of you know any computer language. The sort of closer you are to the to the actual sort of the bone, you know, the the the, the root source, uh, the faster this stuff goes. So when you add abstraction layers, it's, it's always has to be slower, right? So um, mobile performance is 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 painful enough that if there are some sort of little tweaks that we can do, where we will have like a, a one line jQuery script and change that to maybe three lines of really fast JavaScript, uh, that can be a win for core. Um, and maybe those patterns then can be sort of proliferate into into Kutrib that way. jQuery is great. I mean, especially when you're doing like a lot of complicated stuff, jQuery can be really, really great. Um, but it not for absolutely everything. Yeah, we can talk about Smacks right now. Um, I bel the question was, was there free documentation for the uh, Smacks? Uh, and uh, I believe there are parts of the book that are available for free, and then the parts of it that are sort of premium content. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that the base categor categories and stuff are free, because that's how I initially read it, and then I, and then I went and bought the book, because I wanted to read the whole thing. But uh, I, I'm, I think the there's, there's free stuff available on smacks.com to read. Sorry, Jake. Oh, uh, touching on J. I'm repeating it for the the video, I guess. Uh, the touching on jQuery bandwidth. Uh, is there any plans to use jQuery Mobile? Um, jQuery Mobile is a uh, is a library for those people who don't know it, who allow you to sort of build interfaces um, using the jQuery Mobile library uh, for mobile devices. Um, we don't really have a good use case for that in core. So we don't have any plans to use it. Um, it's, you know, contrib, no, no problem. There should be no reason why we can't su support that as a contrib, you know, option. Um, but uh, when we talk about mobile administration here, actually, I'm actually going to talk about that now, too. Um, I'll go back to that. <laughs> mobile administration. So I would consider this about 10% done. Um, basically, we want to make sure People are using their phones in all sorts of different ways. And if they want to like tweak the administration of their site uh, using their phone, I want to do that quite often, actually. Or make, maybe like write a draft blog post while I'm standing in line. I want to do that. Um, so having the ability to use um, you know, most of the administrative functionality uh, of Drupal <laughs> in a mobile device, I think it would be really, really useful and really essential, really, to, to just like uh, the sort of first appearances, right? When you first install Drupal and just sort of look at Drupal 8 and go, does this work on my phone? And then you pull it up and you're like, wow, okay. Yeah, okay, it, Drupal, it, the administration works on my iPhone. This is great. So like, it's a very good first impression, um, but it's also extremely useful. Um, yeah, I'll go back to that. So, ah, too far. Uh, and then I lost the thread. What was the question? <laughs> no, jQuery Mobile. So mobile administration. Um, the way that we're going to do this is is by making the the forms sort of be responsive. Seven is already a fluid layout. So there's, like I said, there's just a couple rules that for some reason have fixed with them. But you know, we, we fix that. Make the the sort of forms be responsive. Um, it uh, it will sort of you'll be able to administrate it on all sorts of different size uh, screens. Because we're, we're like, you know, with seven, we're kind of already, we're already like halfway there. Because the theme already supports Fluid. It's just that there's some forms like, uh, you know, I love vertical tabs on the desktop. Vertical tabs don't work at all on a mobile device. Because all you see are the tabs, and then you have to scroll over to see the rest of the stuff. So there are some different sort of form widgets that we use and patterns that we use in, um, <coughs> in Drupal 8 is administrative screens, and we just need to tweak those so that they, uh, you know, they're vertical tabs for large screens, and they are some sort of different interface for smaller screens. So, uh, yes. Ah. I 
I really need to not press a button like five times. There we go. Um, more questions about uh, Smacks or JavaScript or, or aesthetic? Alex. Uh, so, oh, there's supposed to be a button right there. <laughs> Under front and performance. Yes, responsive images. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I would consider that, <laughs> I would kind of consider that front end performance. It's certainly related to responsive design, but the reason why it's a front end performance concern, of course, is because the default is have a giant image and they just scale it down to a little bitty screen. This is horrible performance, and it's definitely in this sort of square, you know, it's definitely under this sort of front end performance technique. I can't believe I forgot a bullet, damn it. <laughs> What was that? Well, yes. So there, there isn't really, there's no standard. There's no standard for responsive images. There's literally no HTML5 spec for responsive images. You can't, uh, and it turns out that this is a really hard problem. Um, I've been working with uh, the sort of greater web community in uh, talking about this and sort of hashing it out. And we basically discovered that there's no JavaScript way to fix this problem. And the reason for this, uh, it's not necessarily intuitive because it's a total browser internal things. They do this thing called prefetching of images where before they build up the DOM, they're like, I'm gonna look through this HTML source really fast and find the image tags. And then, oh, I'll start downloading those immediately, right? So it starts downloading the images before it even starts building up the DOM. This is the sort of pre-parser that fetches stuff. Uh, and that means that there literally is no way that the JavaScript can run first before that. The only way you could do it is by removing the image tag from the source. But of course now you have a problem because there are some notable devices that don't have JavaScript or there are some users who turn off JavaScript and you've lost all of your images. That's not an acceptable solution, right? So we have to have like basically a the only way to like halfway do it right now is to use a JavaScript solution paired with a sort of default image, which is the mobile size. So it's a small size that's actually in the HTML source. And then basically you use JavaScript to determine what the viewport width is and then load up those larger images for the larger screen size. Yes, that's a double image load uh, for larger image sizes. That's a problem, but that's the only way to do it right now, which totally sucks, which means that we definitely need to have an actual like new technology in HTML that allows us to do this because the browsers do know how big the viewport is before it starts prefetching. So we're working with the spec builders to write a spec so that the browsers can, can look at the viewport size real fast before it does the prefetching. And then when it finds that image tag or whatever is the, the new like picture element, right? it finds that and then it knows based on the viewport which actual source of the ones that are available to download. So that's the only way that it will actually be fixed is with a new sort of element or new attribute on the image tag um, and working through that stuff. And uh, just last week uh, we talked with uh, Matt Wilto um, who's been writing the actual sort of draft spec for this. Um, and uh, Jesse Beach um, started up a, a, a Google Hangout where we talked about uh, these issues and how Drupal can actually sort of implement a, a JavaScript polyfill that's sort of forward looking. Basically we would, we would try to create the markup that we think is gonna be used inside Drupal core. And this is a rough idea, we need input. We would implement the, the markup that we think is gonna become the spec we would implement a JavaScript solution that would do what exactly what I just talked about, that is a sort of polyfill for all the browsers that don't have the native solution, which is every browser right now. But when we get to that spot where browsers know about, they have actual native implementation, you know, like IE or you know, Chrome or whatever implements this, then our JavaScript solution goes, oh, it's already taken care of, I'm not gonna do anything, right? So we want it to be sort of forward compatible, uh, and I think, uh, Matt, uh, Matt Wilto was really interested in, in Drupal actually sort of testing out and seeing how this 
actually works in today's web technologies right now. He's very interested in the work we're doing. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's no HTML5 actual spec for this, and that's what we're trying to work on. Um, and if you're really interested in that, on Friday, you know, all the initiatives are having this code sprint um, that says on the schedule where that room is going to be. Um, I encourage you to come and, and discuss stuff. And of course, we're going to have issues. There's an issue already in the issue queue if you're not going to be here on Friday. And I have a regular uh, mobile initiative. Initi uh, sorry. We have regular mobile initiative meetings online. We've been starting doing Google Hangouts. So that's how you can sort of continue to be involved with stuff. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, the 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 actual sort of right now it's a, it's a picture element that is being proposed as a solution, um, along with a source set attribute, uh, because there are a lot of sort of there are a lot of people who want responsive images, but they want them in slightly different ways. Like some people just want to dis support retina displays, right? And some people just want to have the ability to sort of editorially uh, decide that for small screens, we're going to show like somebody's headshot, right? And then on larger screens, we'll show them in the context of like the, the hall where they're speaking, right? So editorial control over the different croppings, right? Because of those different interests, um, it's a complicated sort of solution. And picture f is, is the sort of element with source set attribute. Uh, it's which is similar to the video tag. Uh, that's the sort of the the current spec. Uh, and the filament group, uh, which Matt Wilter works for, I believe, um, the, uh, they have a polyfill, a JavaScript polyfill called picture fill. Is that right? Picture fill. That's actually the 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 JavaScript library that we're looking at right now in Drupal 8 core. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering uh, kind of what is being talked about in terms of like, like right now it seems like you have to type in the whole media query, you have to, you know. Right. So, so the, 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 the note was basically that there is uh, some quote unquote interesting uh, UX work going on in, uh, in the issue queue right now talking about how you configure breakpoints and actually configure the style sheets. We're definitely at a sort of beginning to hash things out phase right now. We actually had a follow-up conversation to that last initial issue uh, queue posting on Monday, I believe it was. Uh, we had we had Annex, we had uh, Alex Bronstein, we had Nod, <coughs> Nod there, and Mosh, and Jesse Beach, and I think a few other people. And we just were sort of talking about the UX, and and there's that conversation is definitely going to continue on Friday or anytime you want to like just come and find me during the the. Uh, during the conference, I'll be happy to continue that conversation because there is a lot of UX work to make it as, as simple as possible, uh, you know, because there are a lot of moving parts, right? Because uh, if you have a layout, uh, you basically have a, a series of breakpoints for that layout. Uh, um, but you can also have multiple layouts on your site, like one for each node type. So then there's a different series of breakpoints for those different layouts. So it can get a little mind bending really quickly. Um, so definitely want to have the UX as simple as possible so people can understand it, hopefully. <laughs> Okay. So if you kind of upload your image and you say that this image at this break at this breakpoint should be such and such a size, that image at that breakpoint might also be <coughs> of the other size or different resolution than it is. Okay. So what you're talking about is like moving uh, moving an element to a different part of the page for different for different breakpoints. Well, I, I or guess, no, having there are two. So let's say the main content, the node, node page. Yeah. Yeah. And uh -huh. But for whatever reason, I also have a block view in the right rail, and it shows up in there also. 
Right. But so but those are different configurations because I mean you're talking about how you're configuring this w the one image as a field on like the node page and the other you're talking about the you know in the view or that's a block right so it's a different configuration so we don't need to it just sort of the interface is basically sort of naturally take care of that so. uh, any other questions about front-end performance which is these three things plus responsive images which I'm a dumbass for not putting on there um, more questions Okay, so let's move on to HTML5 form elements. Uh, this is basically 80% done. Uh, Jacine has had to step <laughs> down from being the HTML5 initiative lead. Um, she uh, basically just, you know, she's she she wants to do work on other stuff, and you know, so the HTML5 initiative is a lot of work. Uh, it was a lot of work for her, so they got a ton of stuff done. Um, but one of the things that's not quite done. Uh, is the HTML5 form elements. Uh, I believe that we actually have like in form API, we have all the HTML5 elements already. The, the issue is that we don't have those same form elements as widgets for fields, right? And that is kind of a big problem for mobile because <laughs> if we can't create a, uh, like an email field widget for this text field, uh, then the user is not going to get the special email keyboard, right? Because it's not using the email input element, right? Um, is type email, isn't that what it is? Yeah, type type equals email, right? So those things would be like kind of jarring for the user experience because they're expecting the, the you know, HTML sort of flashiness, and it's just not in Drupal 8 yet. So we need some people to help out with that. Um, we have some patches for some of this stuff, and, and the stuff that doesn't have patches can basically look at the other issues and sort of replicate that same pattern. Right? Dave's worked on a, Dave Reed has worked on a bunch of that stuff, and I talked to him on Monday and sort of like, hey, we need to do this. <laughs> so thanks, Dave. Uh, but we need more people to work on stuff. It's not just Dave that's going to do it. He's you know implemented the pattern, and now you have to go and replicate the pattern, please. So you know. Um, are there questions about sort of the HTML5 initiative in general, or you know, form elements in specific? Yeah. So, so uh, the question is: Is anybody going to take over the HTML5 initiative, or is it quote just finished? Um, and it is uh, the way uh, the way that Jason set up the the scope and the goals of the HTML5 initiative. It's really close to being done, right? So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us at this point to, uh, in my opinion, um, and I, I'm obviously, I I'm don't have the hair, I'm not Dries, um, but uh, it, it's a little bit too late, too close to the, the end goal here to have a, like, a new initiative lead and, and try to look at the whole thing again and maybe figure out some new goals. Because there's a lot of HTML5 technologies and there's certainly the opportunity to like, look at all of the HTML5 and go, hey, we need that for core too. Um, we've got a lot of other initiatives that need help already, so like starting up a basically sort of revived HTML initiative part two, uh, we have a resourcing issue already, so we don't wanna drain some of those resources by starting off that new stuff. But we do need people to finish off what's already in the HTML5 initiative. I'm actually gonna be, um, leading the HTML5 initiative sprint on Friday, as well as the mobile initiative sprints. Um, and, and I'm just just doing that because I know that there's people in who were working on the HTML5 initiative that were just kind of waiting for JSON to hold another meeting. And, and I, I, I really think that you can sort of self, uh, self organize and finish up this stuff and I'm just gonna get a, sort of get the ball rolling and have, uh, maybe I'll even have a, an HTML5 initiative meeting here in the next couple weeks. And again, looking for sort of self-organizers to to keep that moving. So, I just want to follow up on that. Also. Yeah. So the one thing I would say is uh, there's a lot of things that are sort of part of HTML5, a, a larger HTML5 umbrella that aren't in core, and the assumption is that they could probably live okay in contrib. Like we don't have audio and video tags in core uh, or fields. Uh, you know, we don't have like geolocation stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't have uh, stuff having to do with web sockets. So there's definitely a lot of things that sort of fall under, fall under the HTML5 umbrella that we're just assuming can be contrib solutions, 
But if anyone here you know, knows HTML5 really well and like looks, digs into what actually is in core and sees that like, oh my god, we are actually missing something that really does need to be in core yeah. uh, and that can't work well as contrib, like, uh, speak up about that. Yeah. You know, because in the absence of having JSON monitoring that, you know, we, need, we need that information. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, Drupal 8 should be able to support anything that's in HTML5. And if we're missing some of the plumbing that allows that full range of capabilities, we need to know that now and we need to get it into core. So uh, if you are playing around with that stuff and you know how the pain points are in Drupal 7, get into the issue queue. Find people. Come talk to me. You know, we need to know. So, yeah. Any other questions about HTML5? Um, mobile administration, I talked about this briefly when we were talking about jQuery mobile, um, but one of the, uh, uh, besides sort of making all the administrative forms be responsive, one of the interesting things that has come out here in the last two weeks um, is of course the Spark Responsive Layout Builder. Uh, this is a very slick uh, layout builder. Um, Chris Vanderwater and I have been talking for months about the blocks and layouts initiative where we were talking conceptually about that initiative is going to have a layout builder, right? And I'm like, I would love it to be responsive. And when you get to that spot in your initiative, I'm going to help out coding that stuff because I think it's really, really important and really interesting. And this is one of the sort of the cross pollination between the initiatives things that happens because a lot of these initiatives are very closely related. Whiskey has web services, for example, right? So uh, we've been talking about that for months, and then the Yaqui team did this Spark demo in D7. Um, how many people here haven't seen the demo yet? There's very few people. That's great, actually. That means a lot of people saw it. Um, there uh, was, what's the most recent like blog post and video that you can find for the demo? Is it is on Dries' site, or? It, or yeah, go to the Acquia booth. You're here. <laughs> go to the Acquia booth. Have them demo it for you. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So they, there was a demo of it yesterday. Uh, so that video is actually already online. So, you know, when, right before you go and drink tonight, go and watch the video. <laughs> um, it's it's really cool. Um, I I think it's it looks at the sort of the current way that we build responsive designs and and the DOM order that you sort of have to have in order to do different layout techniques and really brings all those sort of concepts together in a, an interface that is, is really slick. Um, they are not the people who are going to do this for Drupal 8. They are certainly going to do you know, a bunch of it, but they're looking for community support, community help to actually implement it, basically take the pieces that are there and move it into Drupal 8 core, uh, it, it finish it up. Um, I'm going to quote Gabor here, if he doesn't mind. Um, <laughs> he basically told me the, the interface is really slick and the, the markup and the CSS that it generates, because it's a rough demo, are complete crap. I'm actually paraphrasing. But, <laughs> but there's, you know, there, I've, I've looked at the way they sort of architected and I understand that there's basically a spot where they, after you've done sort of the UI stuff, they generate the CS and they generate the HTML. And there's a big opportunity for somebody to come in and say, I want to make that lean and look awesome and be really slick. Um, and you can come in and, and do that work. And so <laughs> that is a good opportunity. Um, of course, there are lots of other places. That's the one that sort of jumps out at me, the, the generating the HTML and CSS. That's kind of stuff I like. But maybe you would like more interested in some of the other bits of Spark inside the inside the layout builder or the other parts of Spark that aren't the responsive layout builder. Um, the questions about mobile administration or responsive layout builder right now? Yeah. Do I have any thoughts about what? Oh, the Aloha editor. Um, in mobile, uh, not yet. <laughs> I don't have any thoughts about Aloha yet. Um, <laughs> I, I saw the demo yesterday. 
Um, and I thought, hmm, I wonder if it works in a mobile editor. And then, like, it would just, I forgot to ask the question because we were talking about all sorts of different really cool things and, and accessibility and, and stuff like that. So, um, I, do people know, like, does Aloha work in mobile devices? Okay, so, so Wim Lears here is one of the people working on this part um, in, in the Aloha editor says that, and I'm repeating for the video, uh, that uh, it, it works okay-ish in mobile devices and working on improving it. There's a blog post on Dries' uh, website about this as well. Other questions about the uh, the mobile administration? There's, there's a lot of sort of uh, patterns uh, in our forms um, interfaces that we use um, that I think need some uh, some sort of UX love as far as making it a, a, a mobile pattern and desktop pattern sort of you know responsive experience um, in the back here I think you do next sorry Right. So uh, Lewis Nyman did a lot of iterations of the eight mobile administrative interface, uh, specifically the navigation. Um, and uh, he, he, he did a lot of that uh, iterative design work, and there weren't a whole lot of people jumping in and going, oh, I want to implement this. Uh, and then Spark came along, and they've, have a, they've taken some of those ideas and come up with a, a dashboard and sort of simplified administrative interfaces for navigation, uh, which I think build really nicely on what Lewis was working on and, and makes it even better. So I would like to see people make the, S the Spark mobile administration be even better and then use that for Drupal core. And I know that, that the Spark team would also like that as well. So yeah. Um, again, if you haven't seen, that, that's part of the Spark demo. If you haven't seen it, go and take a look. In the back. Uh, so, uh, at, so uh, asked this sort of maybe unrelated question that uh, about um, how do I see the future of jQuery UI in core? Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure. Um, I, I don't actually know the answer to that. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts of the mobile initiative, and I try to know a lot about all the different parts, but that's one of them that I don't know as much about. So I try to find people to help me out and answer those questions for me. Anybody have an answer? <laughs> or their opinion? Not like the answer, but a opinion about this? Yeah, so it's, it sounds like we're starting to use UI in core in, in some of the things. So, oh, yeah, the this, this Spark team was using UI for parts of it, weren't they? jQuery UI? Okay, or so yeah. am I... Okay, so Aloha Editor uses a jQuery UI. Uh -huh. So, yes. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so the question was, are we planning on uh, supporting every single administrative screen in mobile because we're getting views in core? Um, and and I, I <laughs> that is a fantastic question, and I would love to see 100% coverage, really. And, and there are some things that you just can't do on a mobile device, like literally the form widgets don't work on mobile device. Like, I can't upload an image from my phone. It's just not possible. And okay, so right, <laughs> in a month you'll be able to do it. Um, there are limitations inherent to the to mobile devices that don't allow me to do everything that you can on a desktop device. But I would like to see everything that is potentially possible to be able to be done in a mobile device. Um, but the reality is that with a sort of small form factor, people are sort of naturally not going to do those things very often. Like, you know, configuring panels in a mobile device, not such a good idea, I would think. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but the, the the screens that I would like to start working on first 
our content administration. When I might say content administration, I mean content creation, uh, not only just nodes, uh, but like you know, taxonomy or users, you know, administrating those nodes and using users. Um, well, I'm, I would have about to say things are entities, but entities are starting to go all over the place where I'm not sure um, it makes sense to administer those things. Um, blocks will be entities. So mm, now, nah, content creation, like users and, and nodes in particular, I would like to see those things worked on first. Uh, any other questions about anything else here? Or m like maybe gaps too. Big data tables in, in, in the, the administrative area. Yeah, um, that's actually one of the patches that Motion Jesse Beach worked on on Monday and I think they hadn't quite finished it so it didn't get submitted yet. Uh, hopefully that latest patch will come up on Friday and we were working on uh, using a one of the ideas from filament group as far as like as you become a smaller screen basically hide the less important br uh, columns so that when you're on a smaller screen you see the important ones the essential ones and as you get bigger than the slightly more useful ones and then just like everything when you get to a wider screen and there'll be a sort of link above the table that says just show me anything everything anyway and it'll just it'll go off the edge of your mobile screen, but you can scroll over and see it then. Well, yeah, I mean, these are the uh, it would be become part of the the interface for theme table, I believe. So basically, anytime you use theme table, that would be an option that you could do use. Right? So we would just need to the the patch I think converts. I don't know if it converts all of theme all of the uses of theme table, but it definitely updates theme table in at least one sort of uses as, as a, like, like here's an example. I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen the patch because I haven't submitted it on Friday, so we'll find out. Yeah, but we're working on that. Yeah. Other questions? So, uh, one of the easiest ways to get involved, of course, is since you're here, come talk to me anytime you see me. I want to I want to talk about this stuff. I want to find out what your experience is. I uh, want to corral you into actually doing some work. Um, but if you're uh, and, and then of course on Friday, uh, we're having a mobile initiative sprint. Um, everybody is welcome. Um, and uh, then after the conference, uh, this is basically the best resource for finding out about the the mobile initiative. Groups.drupal.org/mobile/slash/drupal-8. <coughs> Um, and if you get out of the way your picture here, um, if you go to there, um, there, <laughs> you're gonna see this, um, which uh, is <coughs> the interesting bit here is the issues to work on. I've sort of broken out all of those different components into like, because you don't want to see like all of mobile initiatives initiative or issues, right? This is just gonna be like a fire hose. So I've broken it down by sort of component, and you can sort of click down into the things that you're interested in and see just those issues. Uh, we have a list of issues novices can tackle. Uh, these are not like um, people that don't know anything about web development, but like people who who worked, you know, dabbled in mobile and feel comfortable in different different aspects of it, and you know they're basically new to Drupal core uh, work. Right? These are some great issues. I think actually we've got patches and somebody was reviewing those patches on Monday um, and uh, then of course we have JavaScript, uh, Stark is complete, uh, Bartik and 7 there's a couple little issues, mobile administration, front-end administration, this is a great place, go there, find something you're interested in and start working on it. So, last chance, anybody.